This video will cover Libre Design's copy, move, and rotate sketch features. There are many different ways to move, copy, or rotate sketch figures in a Libre Design. Here are a few examples. Nodes can be manually dragged to new locations in the same sketch. Clicking and dragging on a node will allow you to move the node or sketch figure to a new location that is approximately where you need it. When you are in select mode, if the sketch is not dimensioned or constrained, Click and drag on a node and you will see the figures move to a new location. If the figures are constrained or dimensioned, you may not be able to move them to a new location, if doing so will interfere with either the constraints or dimensions. If that's the case, those dimensions or constraints will need to be removed before the move command will work. Here's a quick and easy way to make multiple copies of an item and place these copies wherever you need them. While in select mode, Right-click on a sketch item you wish to make a copy of and select Copy from the pop-up menu with the left mouse button. Now right-click once again anywhere in your workspace, but this time select Paste Stamper from the pop-up menu. You should see a copy of the item you selected hovering near the mouse cursor. Now simply left-click wherever you wish to place a copy. To end the Paste Stamper process, Press the right mouse button once again to return to select mode. By the way, now would be a good time to take a look at the commands available on the pop-up mouse menu. Many of the commands you will frequently need are only a mouse click away on this menu. To move and or copy multiple items simultaneously in the same sketch, from the Sketch Tools box on the 2D ribbon bar, while in sketch mode, Select Move, located here, then select the figures you want to move. Selections can be made in different ways. The first way is to select multiple items at once, and the other way is to select individual items to form a group of items. These methods can be used independently of each other, or in combination with each other. In both cases, when the figures are selected, they will change color so you can see which items are selected. To select multiple items simultaneously, window around the figures. Click and drag the mouse from one corner of the design to the opposite corner of the design. When creating this window, if you click from left to right, only the figures that are located entirely within the window will be selected. If an item is only partially within the windowing area, it will not be selected. If you have figures selected that you do not need, hold the Shift key down and select the figures. This will remove only the ones you don't wish to be in the group and will keep the rest of them selected. If you create the windowing box by clicking from right to left, not only will the items totally inside the window box be selected, but the items crossing the boundary of the window box will be selected as well. Some people refer to this right to left method as creating a crossing box because items crossing the edges of the selection window are included in the selection set. Items may be deselected by holding down the Shift key while selecting those items. The second selection method is to hold the Shift key while selecting the figures individually. Note, figures can be selected either before or after the Move dialog box is brought up. At this point, you should have the figures selected. They should be blue. Click the From button in the Move Figures dialog and choose a location in the part workspace that you want to use as the origin point for the move. This can be anywhere in the part workspace or on a specific node. In addition to this, you can also use the direct entry method. This point will be denoted by a red plus sign in the part workspace. Now click the To button, and this will serve as a new location for the sketch. If you want to make multiple copies of the selected figures, click the Copy Sketch box. This will leave copies of the selected items in their original location while placing the selected items at the To location. And finally, click the Apply button. All selected items will move relative to the selected From and To locations. This method will not alter the sketches, but will only reposition the location. The small dark button in the lower right of the Move Figures dialog is the Direct Coordinate Entry button, which provides a means of entering From and To coordinates on your keyboard. 
to use this feature whenever you need to indicate the from or to point. Instead of clicking on a location point with the mouse, click on this button instead to bring up the direct entry dialog. To input your coordinates, you can choose between Cartesian or polar coordinates, and with either of these coordinate systems, you can choose between absolute or relative coordinates. Absolute refers to the XYZ point 0, 0, 0 each time you use the coordinate system. Relative, on the other hand, will refer to the last XYZ coordinate point that was involved in an action. For example, the same point you moved something to with a previous command. The letters U and V represent X and Y coordinates, respectively. This direct entry dialog also works with the rotate feature. To rotate sketch items, use the same selection methods as Move and Copy. The Rotate command is found here in the same location as the Move command. If the Rotate button is not already visible, click on the small down arrow next to Move and click on Rotate to bring up the Rotate dialog box. After selecting the items, click the Center button and select the pivot point, the center of rotation. Enter the degrees of rotation here. Indicate whether or not you wish to make a copy in the checkbox and click on Apply. This video covered Elibre Design's copy, move, and rotate features. You learned how to use these features with single sketch items as well as groups of sketch items. In addition, you became familiar with the pop up mouse menu the Move Figures dialog, and the Direct Entry dialog boxes.